Welcome everyone. I am Alejandra from CFO Connect. We are here today with Joyce and Teresa, both from Pegafund, and they are going to help you master cash management for SaaS. Specifically, they're going to go into the five main reasons why businesses fail, and they're going to help you avoid those mistakes and pitfalls and really help you help your business thrive through these difficult times. So our webinar is called Cash is Queen. And this is not only because we have, we're so lucky to have a superstar panel of all women today. And we love that. And it's also because if anyone in the audience has ever played chess, then you know exactly what we're talking about when we say that cash is queen. So I will give Joyce and Teresa the chance to introduce themselves in just a minute. But before we get into the fun stuff, Take a look at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. There is a chat tab. So introduce yourself in the chat tab and let us know where in the world you are tuning in from. We've got Luke from Berlin. Hi, Luke. Elizabeth from Paris. We have guests from Luxembourg, Nice, Amsterdam. I think Yay. Joyce is in Amsterdam too, right? Yes. I'm also in Amsterdam. And Teresa, where are you based right now? I am based out of New York. Okay. So not as 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 luxurious sounding as these other locations. <laughs> oh, New York is New York is great. I mean Manhattan is yeah. <laughs> Hong Kong, but based in Peru. Oh, oh wow. wow. So jealous. Talk about remote first. <laughs> Cologne, Dubai. Someone loves your plants. Luke loves your plants, Teresa. I also like Thank her plants. Thank you, Luke. These are snake plants. Supposedly really, really good for the environment. Oh, love that. Oh, we've got Buenos Aires. Really from all over Antwerp. Thank you so much. It is so great to see all of you here and see how many different time zones we're in. This is my, that's my favorite part sometimes of these webinars. Um, so on to a next important point, right next to your chat tab is a questions tab. And you are going to have some time at the end of the session to ask any of the questions that you have directly to Teresa and Joyce. So do make sure that you're going into that questions tab and sending all of your questions for them there. They will answer them. Um, okay. So a quick introduction of CFO Connect. So again, I'm Alejandra and I'm on the community team at CFO Connect. And this community is all over the world. It's global and we are finance leaders. And so we host events and workshops like this one. We also have a private Slack group for CFOs and we curate content specific, specifically for finance leaders designed to help you level up in your career and be the best leader that you can be. And CFO Connect is created by Spendesk, which is the seven-in-one spend, spend management solution that was built and designed specifically for modern finance teams. And what's great about Spendesk is that it helps finance stay in complete control and have visibility over everything that's spent. So game changer for finance teams. And if you'd like to learn more, uh, you can go to spendesk.com. Last piece of housekeeping, this session is being recorded. So if you need to go, we understand, we'll send you the recording afterwards. And without further ado, let's have our guests introduce themselves. Joyce, let us know who you are and a bit about your background. Hi everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to be part of the session. I'm Joyce, I'm a modern CFO and also the founder and CEO of Pega Fund. And at Pegafund, what we do is we provide fractional CFO services to high growth SaaS businesses, typically VC and growth equity backed, as well as overall uh, C-level, both current and aspiring C-level business-wide training on SaaS and growth finance. Really excited to be here because as you can imagine, the world has not only changed a lot in the last uh, year or so, but in particular last two, two months um, and in recent weeks, with SVB, um, Credit Suisse, now First Republic Bank as well. So it's, it shows you that this topic is not only important, I think, for everyone on this call today, but uh, the world at large. Uh, and with that being said, I'm super excited to introduce you to Teresa. She is, in fact, 
the queen of cash. Yeah. <laughs> Lots to share on this topic. Um, I'll let her introduce herself as well. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, so my name is Teresa. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, a consultant, and a chartered professional accountant. Uh, I've spent over 15 years advising and working with startup, high growth, pre and post IPO companies in the technology and SaaS sectors. So some notable examples include Newzella, Etsy, Rogers, and Deloitte. So delighted to be here today. Um, so I will get started with the presentation and share my screen. Fantastic. Thank you both. All right. Is that, that one's coming up okay? Awesome. All right. So uh, as we mentioned, uh, the presentation today is about the top five reasons businesses fail from poor cash management. So um, I want to do a quick poll question. So just send me a reaction on the bottom of your screen. Did the collapse of SVB impact your business or spark concerns for your business? Oh, wow. Lots of scary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. I'm just seeing a slew of, of scary face emojis. So clearly, yes, the recent collapse of SVB really hammered this, this message home to a lot of companies. And I think, I, you know, the quote just sums it all up. Uh, revenue is vanity. Profit is sanity, cash is king or queen. So cash is the lifeblood of your business. As you know, you can be profitable on paper and still have a negative cash flow. And I think addressing this audience, we all have an awareness of what the proper cash hygiene, cash management entails, but maybe it's not often something that we take the time to stop, stop and assess. But you really do need to know if you have any cash risk and how to mitigate it in advance. So reason number one, businesses fail to assess the business reality. Even the best cash flow management isn't going to help you uh, if your business fundamentals are out of whack, as in if you don't have a good handle on your business's unit economics or um, you don't have an accurate understanding of your cash burn and runway. Um, so quick question from the from the audience. Does your company consistently close by workday 10? And are you guys confident in your company's financial close process? Okay. Oh, okay. Amazing. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. So gold star to you guys. I'm happy to hear that. So of course, hopefully, you know, if you're in the series B, series C stage, you've got your financial close process down. Your financials should be that single repository, one source of truth for your company. So I'll give you an example. Um, one of my clients uh, was Series B approaching Series C, a SaaS client. And they had all of their customer invoices and vendor payables running through their accounting system. And that was what was generating their financials, which was great. Except their revenue, which is arguably the most important number, was still being run on an old rickety Excel spreadsheet. And we were in constant fear that that Excel spreadsheet was one day going to corrupt and we were going to lose all that data. So it's really common in high growth companies to focus on the scale of your services and product and not invest the time to ensure that your financial processes have caught up. But I highly recommend that you set some time aside, you know, even on an annual basis to evaluate the sufficiency of your financial processes. And just a reminder, you know, if, for example, you're eyeing an IPO, um, you know, in the U.S., you need to produce two to three years of audited financials in order to do that. So a question to ask yourself is if it's time to start thinking about compliance issues. Having the discipline to do a timely monthly close and the automated processes to achieve that really drives that good behavior throughout the organization. And this will give you the clear picture, honest snapshot of your business, allowing you to find opportunities and to mitigate the risk before a crisis situation. So reason number two, businesses don't forecast their future cash inflows and outflows. So when you're driving a car on a highway, you're definitely scanning ahead, right? You're, you're making sure you're hitting the right exits and you're avoiding any roadblocks. Preparing cash flow projections is doing the same thing for your business. So quick, quick poll question. Does your business do short-term and medium-term cash forecasts on a regular basis? Ah, oh, amazing. Okay, preaching to the choir. Lots of thumbs up. Love it. 
<laughs> Thank you, Hugo. <laughs> um, so I think a lot of high growth companies are very focused on the PL and the targets, you know, especially the sales targets that they've disclosed to the board. And maybe there's a complacency that, you know, you've just secured your Series B or Series C funding or achieved a certain level of profitability, you know, that cash management isn't an issue. But I did have a tech startup client that, you know, they were preparing to IPO within the next 12 months. And I remember one day uh, the internet went out in the entire office, which is a mission critical problem for a tech company. And it turns out that the client did have their funding secured. They just lost track of their cash outflows and ended up being overdrawn in their checking account. And it took them a few days to be able to move you know, money from different accounts to sort it out to replenish the account. And also they didn't have an automated process in place to pay invoices. So they were actually a few months behind on the internet bill, which is why they got shut down so aggressively. And so each piece of the problem would have been very easily addressable with a little foresight, but combined created this really odd, unnecessary crisis at work. So this really drove home, you know, the need for even a profitable company that has financing uh, to do a short term cash flow forecast and to review it weekly. So best practice is to do a weekly cash forecast on a rolling six to eight, eight, six to eight week basis. And then at a higher level, you're going to want to do a monthly forecast on a 12 to 18 month basis. So the process of doing regular cash flow projections are going to lead to some really great insights. For example, are you overspending or underspending in certain areas? Do you have a comfortable cash cushion or are there some red, you know, danger zones ahead that you need to circumnavigate? Okay, reason number three, businesses don't optimize their cash inflows and outflows, as in businesses poorly manage their working capital. So uh, quick question, does your company regularly review the aging of your accounts receivables and payables? I love this crowd. Okay, so many thumbs up. Amazing. So how do you optimize your working capital? So firstly, you want to speed up your cash in. Are you invoicing customers on a timely basis? How quickly do you collect? How do you chase late payments? Is it automated? Is it manual? Or worse, is nobody monitoring it at all? Uh, does it make sense to offer customers discounts to pay early? If you have certain customers that are consistently paying late, you know, should you start charging them interest? Secondly, you want to slow down your cash going out. So are you paying invoices back too early, you know, even before they're due? Are you always late on paying invoices because you guys don't have an automated system and therefore incurring a lot of fees that you don't need to? Can you consolidate suppliers so that you can negotiate discounts? Is all of your business spend actually appropriate? How do you know? Are you controlling your company's credit card spend? Thirdly, you want to continuously monitor your cash inflows and your outflows. So for example, it's really helpful to pull weekly accounts receivable and accounts payable aging reports um, and review them. And then you want to tie back to how does this impact your six to eight week cash forecast? Quick question, does your company ever calculate or assess its cash conversion cycle? Ooh, silence. Okay. Um, you know, this is okay. Oh, okay. Lots of sad faces. No problem. Hey, if there's one thing you guys took away from today, okay. Cash conversion cycle. I'm excited for this. Okay. So the lower your cash conversion cycle, the better your business's cash generating position. So as a reminder, your cash conversion cycle is a pretty simple formula. It's your day's inventory outstanding plus your day's sales outstanding less your day's payable outstanding. Now, for the purposes of SaaS companies, we're going to ignore the inventory piece of the equation for now. It's probably, you know, not relevant or immaterial. Um, the easiest way to kind of understand this is to walk through an example together. So let's say we have company A and their sales team takes 90 days to collect payments from their customers. However, their accounting team is so gung ho and they pay all their bills like as soon as they get them, you know, within five days, like way before they're even due. So you can see it takes them 90 days to get cash in versus only five days to get cash out. So company A's cash conversion cycle is 85 days. On average, it takes them 85 days to generate more cash. 
In contrast, let's look at company B. Um, their, their sales team takes 45 days to collect payment from customers um, and they pay their bills net 30 days. So their cash conversion cycle is only 15 days. On average, it only takes them 15 days to generate more cash. So you can see even setting simple policies or goals, you know, around the number of days it takes you to collect from your customers versus pay your vendors can make a huge impact on your cash flow. So, um, you know, if you find that your company is consistently in a cash crunch situation, in addition to having a really tight lid on that six to eight week cash flow, your cash conversion cycle is a metric that you'd want to track closely. Or even like, let's say you have a very comfortable runway. Uh, this might be an interesting exercise to do once. Uh, you may find some room for optimizing some company policies to help improve your cash management. So just kind of some food for thought, you know, if you do have VC backing, uh, VC funding is like a, a corporate credit card that you never have to pay back. You know, that is until your house gets taken away because you haven't delivered on time on your promise to investors before you maxed out that credit card limit. So knowing how long it takes your business to pull cash in versus pull ca push cash out is critical. It can help you optimize your cash flow situation and can even potentially become a competitive advantage. Reason number four, businesses don't consider financing needs in advance. Um, failing to plan is planning to fail. I think, I think this is an another great quote. Um, quick question, does your company have a line of credit? Oh, okay, a mix. So some yes, some no. Okay. Um, you know, as part of your cash flow projection, you, you need to plan your financing needs in advance and not in a crisis situation uh, when bankers might be nervous to lend. Um, it's, it's just always nice to have that spare umbrella in your bag when that surprise rainstorm arrives. So um, if you're not closely managing your cash and it's business as usual, like maybe things are fine. But then there's always that one surprise, like, oh my goodness, a huge deposit for that big project that we've been talking about finally went through and it's the same week that payroll came out. And all of a sudden we're in an overdraft position and we're stuck because we can't process any more transactions um, until we're able to fund our bank account. And you know, maybe it'll take like at least a day or two days to kind of move all the cash around to fund your accounts. Um, so I don't know if that big surprise has ever happened to you, drop me an emoji. <laughs> I'm sure we've all been there. Oh, nobody, just me. Okay. Well, <laughs> oh, okay. A couple. Yeah. Um, so yes, be strategic and apply for a line of credit before you need it. Uh, because qualifying for a line of credit is much easier when you're in good financial health and banks will be more willing to approve you and they'll give you a better rate. All right. Reason number five. Businesses don't have a contingency plan for a crunch time situation. So let's say company C banks with SVB and they woke up one morning realizing that they had no access to any of their funds. What are some crunch time levers they could employ? So consider, could you offer some big discounts to generate some quick sales and cash inflows? Could you uh, go to your accounts receivable outstanding and offer some of your good customers an incentive to pay early um, or even prepay um, in order to get some quick cash in? Could you negotiate with suppliers or your landlord for extra time to pay bills? Could you offer to consolidate SaaS tools and vendors to get additional rebates and discounts? Amongst the founders, the C-suite and investors, who would be committed to contribute how much should a sudden cash call situation arise? So it's critical to have a contingency plan to discuss and share with the founder or management team in advance of a crisis situation. So the purpose of the discussion today was to focus on the day-to-day -day operational cash management, um, but there are some, some other considerations, some food for thought for you. It's really important to determine how many months worth of cash outflow you need to keep in your checking account. So a business should always have a minimum of six months of cash runway. And when you have less than that, you really need to have a tight handle on your accounts receivable, your accounts payables, and that six week cash forecast. 
A business that isn't profitable should never operate with less than three months of cash runway without a secure contingency in place. Uh, in fact, in certain countries in Europe, it's technically illegal or at the very least will trigger a director's liability. So what should you do with any cash that you're sitting on in excess of what needs to be kept in your checking account? So you need to consider what is your company's long-term cash management and investment strategy? Have you diversified your investment risk and even your bank? Um, so as you can see, there are some other long-term considerations for you, uh, but to dig into that would be like a whole other session. Spectacular achievement is always preceded by unspectacular preparation, which is another favorite quote of mine. Um, strong cash management brings many benefits to a founding team. That cash is king, cash is queen mentality can really make or break a company. Adopting this mindset from the top to throughout the organization creates focus and opportunity. So if I could impart the top three takeaways. One, having the automated processes in place and the discipline of closing your financial books each month is a key control. This helps provide the honest snapshot of your business's reality. And this is critical to decision making and leads to cohesive leadership. Second, cash is king or queen. Um, it's imperative to have a short-term cash flow forecast for that rolling six to eight week period. Um, and this will help ensure the viability of your high growth company. Thirdly, have a contingency plan in advance of a crisis situation. This will provide you optionality and many ready to go choices for when times get tough. So if you'd like to figure out how well you're doing at cash management and where you are relative to your peers in this new environment, reach out to me. Uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn and send me a DM. We have a great operational scorecard to provide you with that insight. Um, so thanks for joining us today and I will guess we'll kick it over to questions. Thank you so much, Teresa. That was a great way to start off the discussion. Really, really interesting. Um, we already have several questions coming in in the questions tab. So just remember, if you have something that you'd like either Teresa or Joyce to speak to specifically, please go to the bottom right hand corner of your screen and ask some questions. So um, I've already seen one that's been upvoted a lot. And People are curious to know what are the tools and technology that you are using to gain greater visibility and control over your cash? Awesome. OK, that's a great question. Um, I don't think we're allowed to plug any specific tools or platforms at this talk, but um, I, I think there's some things to consider. Um, there's a lot of tools for each of the separate processes. So for one of them, um, I would say FP&A tools. There are several tools out there for financial planning and analysis, and they can even help with managing cash flow, forecasting, scenario planning, and they integrate with uh, many existing accounting systems like QuickBooks, Xero, and NetSuite. So FP&A tools are definitely you know one on the list. Uh, secondly, um, consider billings, collections, accounts receivable. So there are a lot of tools out there to streamline recurring billing, help you manage subscriptions and improve your accounts receivable management. Um, and having an automated process is gonna reduce your day's sales outstanding and improve your cash conversion cycle. Uh, third bucket is um, data analytics for tracking KPIs. Um, so there are tools out there that will actually help you create dashboards to man monitor KPIs, especially KPIs that Im impact cash flow. Um, you can also look at things like um, um, customer churn, lifetime value, customer acquisition costs. Um, so these analytics will help you make data-driven decisions and identify trends that impact your cash flow. For me, the fourth bucket is expense management. So the flip side of your accounts receivable. Um, so there are a lot of tools out there that will help you manage your travel and expenses. Um, you can even build in and set policies and, and make uh, pre-approval workflows. So really good tools to help you with your expense management. And then for me, the fifth bucket is accounts payable. So there are tools out there to automate your vendor payment processes, including things like OCR, so you can dispense with data entry. Um, and to me, the sooner the invoices are logged in the system, they're on your radar, even if you don't pay them, you know, even if you should, you should be paying them net 30, um, the more information you have, this is more information to inform your upcoming cash outflows. In terms of these, you know, aside from these five kind of areas where there are a lot of tools, you want to ask yourself an overarching question, like, is the right solution 
a very integrated platform, so everything's automated and tied together. But maybe you're not getting the best of each solution. Or for, is for your company, the right thing is to have the specialized tools for each process, but that means you need to integrate and consolidate everything manually. So just food for thought for your company. Good. Thank you very much for that. And just so you know, we are among friends here. So if you wanted to name drop any specific tools that you think are fabulous, feel free. <laughs> Sure, the like send desk. <laughs> Good one. Um, okay, and and Joyce, is there anything that you would like to share about uh, tools and tech? Yeah, I would just say depending on your stage of business, and stage of business is not just in terms of headcount or annual revenue, um, but also your data and process maturity and repeatability around that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily. How do I say it? I phrase this in the most articulate way? I wouldn't jump too soon in implementing new tools until you make sure that your data and your processes are mature enough. So I think it's a common pitfall in startups and scale-ups that you, you try to use tools to solve really process and data integrity issues. Um, and actually, once you, you know, once you have that in place, it's much easier to implement tools to take away um, manual work and save time. Uh, but just really make sure that the business is ready to implement, adopt, understand um, both the benefits and challenges around adoption um, and take it on in a way that really helps make everyone's life and job easier. Yeah, that is great advice. Um, another question that I would like you two to answer is what should we consider as finance leaders when we're thinking about our business's long-term cash management strategy? Yeah, that's an amazing question. Okay. Um, it all starts with, you really need to have a good handle on your monthly cash burn or how much cash you're generating each month. So once you know how much cash you're, you're using um, on each period, you need to start to bucket it out. So for example, on a monthly basis, I need this amount of cash. On a six month basis, I need that amount of cash. On a 12 month basis, you know, we hear our big projects, so we're gonna need this amount of cash. Um, so how, once you know how much cash you need for each time bucket, um, you know how much of your remaining cash can be put away. And this is a good time to actually speak with an asset manager because they can help you find investment vehicles that match your timeline and your risk levels. Thanks, Joyce, is there anything you'd like to add there? Uh, yeah, I just think understanding the commercial part of your business and being able to really work closely with your business partners uh, in marketing, sales, product, engineering, and of course, uh, your founder, CEO. Uh, that's really, really critical because I think especially in a startup scale up environment where things are constantly changing, you do need to understand the different um, sources and uses of cash in terms of working capital, um, predictable growth and experimental growth. And once you understand that, then it's much easier to bucket things into, as Teresa said, monthly, quarterly, biannual, and annual. Um, so being able to put in place the processes that, that allow you to pivot or change from one strategy to another and breaking that down is, is really quite important. Well said, thank you. Let's circle back to tools because we have nine upvotes in the questions tab on Jurgen's question, any tips on good cash forecasting tools? So anything that you can share there, it is a popular question. Um, I have not had personal experience with all of these. So just caveat, you know, definitely do your due diligence and make sure it's the right tool for your um, company. But I, I've some examples I've heard of are um, Adaptive Insights, uh, Anaplan, and Vina Solutions. But just, you know, caveat, <laughs> do, your, do, your, do your own homework on it. <laughs> I think in France, there's also one called uh, AggieCap that has come up quite a lot in discussions, but I personally have not used it myself. So again, I think it's very business specific, but ultimately the cash forecasting tools are most valuable when you have quite a complex um, operational setup meaning you have you know, thousands of customers or like even hundreds of customers. If you only have a handful or even arguably like one or 200, I think it's just best managed in a Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheets. 
ever trustworthy Excel. Um, Tim would like to know what is your tool of choice for short term cash management? That's so funny. Like I, I would go back to just honestly, like an Excel spreadsheet. Um, I think it's it's even more just the exercise of you guys doing doing that process um, and just really looking at your accounts receivable and your accounts payable uh, reports. Excel, what can Excel do? Like, honestly. <laughs> yes, Stefan is actually asking for an Excel alternative. What about tools to prepare cash FCT? So people are looking for outside of Excel. Do you, would you recommend that? Or do you think uh, they should stay in? If, if you're not using it, Excel letter. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've, I'm a big fan of Excel or even like Google Sheets, which is which is basically Excel. <laughs> I guess I would throw the question back and say, what is it about Excel or Google Sheets that's not working for you? Yeah, that would be interesting to know. Hugo is also asking uh, Excel alternative. Yeah, let us know in the chat. Why are you unhappy in Excel? What are, what What more do you need? What are you looking for? And while we are waiting, okay, so Claudia makes a good point in the chat. Not possible to integrate cash position of all bank accounts in Google Sheets or Excel. So yeah, that integration component is going to be Hmm. I'm kind of I'm kind of shocked because like CSV files are like almost the the default for bank. Like I've never seen it um, with any other option. Um, I, not possible to integrate. I guess also my question is um, how how many accounts do you have? Like is yeah. it is it worth it to do you have that many that it's it's not it, it you know it needs an integration. And also, are you talking about the reconciliation between your book and bank cash at the end of each month? What is the particular, um, I guess, problem that you're trying to solve with the integration? So Claudia says, for the moment, two entities with two currencies and hmm. five bank accounts in total. Um, I mean, maybe something to throw back to the bank is, listen, I need an integration and you're not, in, you know, you can't integrate with Excel. So what do your customers use? Hmm. Interesting. Thanks, Teresa. So another question that we've got a few upvotes on. Alex would like to know if you have any SaaS specific insights or recommendations for cash management. So anything specifically SaaS for our audience today? I think that when it comes to, to SaaS, like when it comes to nailing your cash forecast, you just have to nail your revenue forecast. Um, and then all of your other expense and hiring decisions will flow from that. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, like I just, you gotta nail your, your revenue. <laughs> Thanks, Joyce. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, I think that's it's pretty simple. It's really your pipeline hygiene. So having right data in your CRM system, making sure your stages are defined, making sure that there's accountability behind what the sales team, uh, marketing team is communicating. Um, but for a SaaS business, it's all revenue driven. So you know, all your forecast should be should start from the revenue buildup and then flow down. For, uh, to the rest of the PL and the other two statements. Thank you. Super clear. An interesting comment from Viv in the chat um, back to this Excel debate. Um, your FPNA can also model a CF template that will normally work in short and long term forecasting. Um, normally, they will use Excel or Google Sheets. Tools are just vehicles. What is important is we know the basic and understanding of our business. I love that. Thank you, Viv. Love I could that. not agree more, Viv. Yeah. <laughs> Tools will not solve fundamental problems around strategy planning and forecasting. 
Yeah, that is a good message to take home today. Kyle would like to know anywhere we can download some free Excel templates for cash flow forecasting. Um, Have you ever used any templates? I, I like to build my own, maybe just because I'm like a little bit of a control freak and you know your company the best. Um, for example, you also need to consider how easily is the information you need available to you? So if you're like, oh, well, the template has it broken out into these accounts or in this format, but if that's not how you do it at your own company, you know, I don't, again, a template is a tool and it's not going to solve your issues. Um, but um, yeah, I think you could do a quick Google. Um, I think there might be some, you know, you can see some templates, but don't, you know, don't be afraid to, to make your own too. Thanks, Teresa. A question from Claudia. How often do you look at your unit economics? Monthly or quarterly basis? Any other options of frequency? Joyce, do you want to jump in on SAS metrics? <laughs> um, I would say it depends on your go-to-market motion. So monthly, definitely if you're a product-led growth or inside sales company. Quarterly, if you're a mid to enterprise sales business, but it really should align with your, your sales cycle and your motion around that. Great, thank you. Luce is asking for a profitable company, what is the minimum cash balance we should keep in our bank account? I would I would say three months. Joyce, do you agree? Yeah, I don't think it's any different for a profitable company. It ultimately also depends on like what what is um what is your next business milestone? Are you looking to fundraise? Are you looking to exit? Um, are you looking to acquire other businesses to grow? So a lot of that, <clears throat> a lot of uh, the minimum cash balance also depends on how aggressive you are in expanding to your next business milestone. But as a minimum, definitely three months. Great, thank you. Another timing question from Nastasia. For payroll, do you consider 15 days as an average for number of days to cash out? Do you know what? Most of my payroll experience has been American and we pay bi-weekly in America. And I understand in Europe, you guys pay monthly. Um, sorry, where is Natasha's question? It's 15, oh, it's 15 days as an average for number of days to cash out. Um, maybe I'm not understanding the question. Like for me, from a payroll perspective, that's probably one of your most easiest numbers to forecast. Like, you know, when payroll is due, you know, that you submit payroll on this day and cash comes out on that day. Um, so I think when it comes to talking about your, like your cash conversion cycle, um, as long as you're making optimal hiring and staffing decisions, payroll doesn't bother me so much. It's not really like, that's not really the surprise, you know, when payroll is coming out, it's like the other things that you don't know. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> Thank you. Now a question from Larry, what alternatives to treasury tools are there like Mercury for Europe? And by the way, Nastasia said, thank you. Yes, you answered okay. her question. <laughs> I'm actually not familiar. Oh, business checking your stuff. Is, is Mercury a banking platform? I'm not sure. Larry, Larry tell us more in the chat if you can. It is. Can you clarify what is the business problem that you're looking to solve? So Larry's looking for alternatives to treasury tools. Is that for FX for some other purpose? Larry would like to earn more interest on idle cash. I think 
For me, it's maybe not a specific app or platform, but it's going through that long-term cash strategy, you know, putting out your buckets, knowing how much, um, and then having a conversation with your bank or an asset manager. Um, Mercury integrates with Morgan Stanley's treasury money markets. You guys are so helpful in the chat. Thank you for yes, it. thank you, chat. <laughs> acting. Don't have an answer to that question, unfortunately. Okay, it's not a bank bank. Okay. And we've also in the chat, Quabena shared a daily cla daily cash flow model. So oh. it can be helpful if you scroll thank up. You, Quabena. Super helpful. Thank you. All right. We've got, okay. we've got another question from Alexis. What is the starting point for your cash forecast? I tend to forecast from PL because I have granularity and then add few WC items. But those are not reconciled precisely every month with the true cash balance. What can you say to Alexis? Oh my goodness, Alexis! I mean, I would I would do the same thing as you. Um, yeah, for me, like it starts from from the PNL again, the revenue, all of your expense decisions, and then yes, you factor in the the working capital. Um, yeah, I think that's exactly that's exactly how how I would do it. And yes, it is a cash forecast, so it's not you know it's not going to be um, exact. Well, I, I would say like cash starting balance plus you know working like receivables, payables. Um, and then obviously that like becomes your cash ending balance and that rolls. So I am using the PL, but I'm translating it into cash. Thank you. A question from Harry. What else besides DOAR, DOAP, and others, what should we forecast or consider in order to achieve cash as king or queen? I think that's pretty good. I don't know, Joyce, do you have anything to add? Mm, I think if you're, it depends on, Harry, are you working at a startup that is burning cash or are you guys profitable? I don't know if Harry can, because I, I think in the first scenario, if you're a company that's burning cash, then you need to look at what is the ROI on the cash that you're investing into the business, which is effectively, you know, your cash burn relative to net new uh, revenue or net revenue coming in, uh, depending on your business business model. That's quite important to look at. Because that's essentially telling you whether you're, whether you're investing cash in a solution that is delivering, um, that is profitable. Thank you. And we have, we are quickly running out of time. So we've got time for Kitty's question. What profitability options other than overnights do you suggest Is, is that about investing the cash that you're not using? Okay. Yeah, again, I think that's like a a, a deeper conversation when you're thinking about your long-term cash strategy and then having like that deep dive with your investment and asset manager or your bank. Anything you'd like to add, Joyce? All right. Thank you so much, Teresa and Joyce. You have been so great today and we've learned a lot and you have answered everyone's questions. So thank you so much. <laughs> uh, just once again, CFO Connect is the global community for finance leaders. If you haven't already joined the community, we are going to send that link in the chat so that you can apply. Um, membership is free and it's reserved for experienced finance professionals. And once again, CFO Connect is powered by Spendesk. And if you would like to learn more about Spendesk, we're also going to send that link in the chat. And 
just remember, take it away with you that cash is king or queen. And with that, I will let you go and have a great rest of your week. Thank you guys so much. You guys are an amazing audience. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care.